fellow diamond painting addicts and welcome back to Diamond Painting Anonymous. I'm Daphne and I'm here today to share with you the finish and my thoughts on my latest project. So the next part of the video that you're gonna see was previously recorded. So I apologize for jumping around a little bit, but I hope it'll all make sense in the end. So catch in a bit. Okay guys, I was in the middle of this process and then I suddenly thought, oh, you probably would wanna see this. So, okay, I have decided to do this particular design on my blank canvas. It's gonna end up with extra space around it because this is a round design, but I'm okay with that. I'll fill it in with black or something. I'll, I'll decide that later. So what I did was I took all of the diamond dots numbers and I went and looked up the conversions to DMC codes. And then once I had those, the conversions to the DMC codes, I got out my trusty little round stickers and I wrote down all of the DMC numbers. And I'm gonna be using my favorite little cube storage for this. And I'm just going to go through my spares I don't know how many of each one that I need. Um, some drills, obviously, I'll be using more than others, uh, some colors, but I'm just gonna go through and dump in some drills. So I've got the these uh, colors already, the stickers on here, so I'm just gonna start pulling these. And you can see I've got a lot of 154, which is great because the point of this, besides ending up with a nice diamond painting, is to use up some of my spares. So that's good. And I'm probably pouring in way more than I need, but I'm okay with that too. So 317 and 318. Again, ooh, I've got multiple shades in there. So I may have to pick through some of those. So we'll see how that goes. For now, I'm just gonna dump them all in there and then we'll see as I go how many I need and if I have enough that I have to sort through. Um, once I've sorted through those, if I need any more, I can always come back to the bag and get them and sort through them again. So there's 317 and then I need 318 which again, I've got multiple shades in here, but that's okay. Again, I have no idea how many I need because this particular design doesn't say how many drills of each color you need or anything. So again, I'm just gonna fill this up and then if I need more, I'll come back and get them. I did notice, however, when I was looking through the book, that this book must be a newer one because the other two aren't like this. This one actually lists the fabric size that you might need and also lists the size of the, um, in inches and in centimeters. Now, that obviously includes a bunch of the white space, so that's why I picked that particular design because I'm pretty certain it's gonna fit in the middle. I just have to do a little bit of figuring out to figure out where the middle of it is and where I want to start. So uh, I'll get to that in a minute, but for now, and it, I feel like I'm picking a bunch of colors that I actually have a lot of. Again, same thing with this one. I've got some multiple shades. I'm okay with that. Odds are I'll either pick through them or I will just mix them in there and you may not be able to tell that I've mixed them in. If I like checkerboarded or whatever, you wouldn't be, you wouldn't know. Okay, so now I'm gonna jump to 703. And see, I don't have very many of these at all. So, and it looks like there's quite a bit of green. So I'll start with this one and we'll see. Maybe I'll end up substituting another color that's similar but not exactly the same. Or maybe I'll go raid my diamond dots ABs. I think I have a package of ABs. 
in green, although I don't know if they're that color. Let me look really quickly. Nope, those are yellow. Purple. Okay, I've got some green ones here. And these are Diamond Dots ABs, which seem pretty similar. So you know what? I'm just going to dump a bunch of these in one of the containers here and we'll see what happens. Maybe I'll decide to use those ABs. Don't know. Okay, so now I can put my empty bag back in where it belongs. Okay, then I need 762. Oh yes, I have plenty of these. Okay, and then 779, which again is a color I'm sure I've got plenty of. This is turning into a kit up, which isn't really what I intended, but I guess that's okay. 762 and then 779. Okay, and I've got plenty of these. Okay, so I'm going to continue pulling drills and basically kitting this up and yeah, when I get to the next portion of it, I'll come back and share. So don't go anywhere. Okay, guys, so I finished putting the drills in here. Now, I know that I put in way more drills than I need. I'm okay with that. Some I need colors so that I can pick through them, and some of them, I have a ton of them, so it's fine. Um, at the most, I'll just be dumping them back into my storage, so whatever. So I've got all my drills. Then I needed to do a bit of calculation. I needed to figure out what is the middle point because I'm going to have to start in the middle and work my way outward. Well, I guess I don't have to, but that's kind of how I always started my cross stitching. So that's what I'm going to do. So I found the middle point, which is this drill here by dividing the design. And I'm just counting the actual piece of the design because anything extra is going to just end up being probably black. So then I counted up my drills and found the middle point and this pink is just on the cover sheet just for my reference now so it's not actually on the canvas but I know that's my starting drill. So when I start laying drills that'll be where I start putting them and that should give me enough room to go both directions and figure out what I need to do. So yeah so that's the middle point because this is 30 by 30 which is if I counted everything correctly, 89 drills by 89 drills. So that gets me the midpoint and that's where I can start on the pattern. So yeah, let's see what happens next. Okay guys, so I transferred my mid marks to the canvas because I'll be cutting off that section anyway. I washi taped underneath the cover sheet so I don't lay my hand in any of the glue and then I decided the easiest thing would be to actually use this washi tape method. So my original intention had been to kind of do 10 by 10 squares but there's really no good way to do that so I just kind of eyeballed it. My washi tape isn't straight, my sizes, my squares aren't all the same size, that's fine. I know where my starting mark is and I can cut that section out and know where I need to lay the first drill and then I can just start following the pattern and I'll start cutting off all of the sections. So yeah, I think I'm ready to get started. We'll see how this is all going to turn out. I may be having to sub in some colors. I did have a couple of colors that I don't have a ton of. Of course, the 703 I don't have a ton of, but I can substitute in these ABs. Now the 813, I did not have a lot of either, but I'm sure I have another blue that I can sub in if I need to. And also 3845, I don't have a ton of either. But I'm also gonna cross my fingers that, you know, that's probably a couple hundred drills, a little less, maybe a hundred drills at least. That for the size of this painting, I hope will get me everything that I need. And yeah, cause there's just, a few little sections, or like I said, I'll sub in some other color. But for right now, I'm just gonna get started and we'll see how it goes, so. So you guys could see how I kind of kitted up the project and I got everything ready to go. 
I really was excited to do this project and kind of see how it turned out. And I wanted to kind of share my thoughts and what I've decided since going along. So you know from my previous video about doing projects with spare drills that I decided the small projects are not for me. This one was probably about as small as I would like to go to make it worth all the effort of doing everything else. But I did also learn some things and that's one of the things I wanted to share with you. So I did tell you guys that I was going to use this pattern. I did all my DMC codes and I got all of that. And then I figured out where the midpoint was and, and started doing that. Well, then when I started working on the pattern, I didn't want to mark up the pattern in here. I could have used a highlighter, could have done, and then I just didn't want to mess this up in case I wanted to do this project again. Don't know that that will ever happen, but, or maybe I would want to share this with someone. So what I did was I ended up going and just basically making a photocopy of this page and then I could mark that all up and do what I wanted and it wouldn't matter because it wouldn't be in my book. So that's the first thing. It is a very hard to keep track of your spaces if you can't mark it off. Now you can use an option like Pattern Keeper, um, but since this is, you know, I had the book, I didn't have the pattern or the PDF or whatever. And so I just didn't do it that way. I mean, I had the, the paper pattern to work from that was good enough. And this isn't a big pattern, so it was fine. I'm sure it's a little bit easier to help keep track of your place with Pattern Keeper because as you highlight a color, it will highlight all the drills of that uh, particular DMC, but it's still a little bit hard to count. So that was one thing. Some other things I've discovered, <laughs> So I had several colors where I had dye lots mixed and let me pour out some of these drills so you can see what I mean. So this was number 317, but if you look in here, I've actually got three different shades. I've got this kind of very dark gray shade, a lighter gray shade, and then kind of a, a slate gray shade. And because of the way this pattern looks, it they all kind of needed to be exactly the same. It was because of the style of it, it was very, you know, here's the color, not a graduated or mixed in or whatever. So yeah, I don't know if in the future, if I will mix dye lots. It was very frustrating to try and sort them out to do a project like this. And it just added that much more time because not only am I spending time picking through the drills to get the dye lot that I want, it meant that I couldn't multi-place because they're all mixed in here together. And so, you know, I'm, I'm picking through the drills not only to get the color that I want, but that means I have to single place everything, which is not the end of the world, but just, you know, for my own future projects, probably not something I really want to spend a whole lot of time doing. Now, that being said, I've already got drills where I have them mixed up. In much larger projects like my heaven and earth designs and things, it probably wouldn't matter that I had separate shades as long as they weren't too dramatically different. But for something like this, it just didn't work. So that's something I'll have to consider as I continue to save my spare drills. So yeah, that, sorting out the drills, not being able to multi-place, plus having to continually check and double check where I was at to make sure I didn't make any mis mistakes just was very time consuming. And let me assure you, I did make mistakes. Everything ended up and it looks okay, but I'm sure I know at the end I got off on my counting. It all worked out because I kind of worked from the outside. I worked from the middle to the edges and then I kind of did the, the circle. So it all worked out, but yeah, it just, oh. And the other thing about my dye lots not matching is that I also mixed companies. You know, I, I didn't understand, well, I understood why people were keeping them separate. I've seen people who keep their Diamond Art Club drills separate from their Dreamer Designs drills, separate from whatever. My only thing is, I don't keep mine separate, so I couldn't tell you what company they came from, but some drills, especially in my browns, were slightly taller than not not wider circumference but taller in height so when you roll over them they stick up a little bit more that's another 
thing for me to think about when I'm, you know, deciding whether or not I want to mix colors and whatnot. Yeah, so, so that's something for me to consider whether or not I want to continue to do that. Okay, so this kid had one AB already, which was the white AB that got used for the clouds, which it doesn't really look like an AB in this picture, but that's what it called for. Now, the green of the hills here, I didn't have enough drills of that color. This is all I had left of that color. So I elected to sub in some green ABs that I had, which I think looks a little odd. My husband said it looks fine, but the point was for me to experiment with doing this project. So even if it didn't turn out exactly the way I wanted, it's all good. I learned something. The other thing that I learned was I do not like the guide circles on the canvas. If you don't place the drills exactly right, you can still see the black lines. And because it's a white canvas, it just makes everything that much more apparent. Now, my husband had a good idea because I copied this out of the book and you can see here I, I marked off all of my uh, drills as I was placing them. He's like, well, what if you took a copy of this and then enlarged it so that it was the same size as your canvas and then you could take your light pad, put this on top of it, put your canvas on top of it, and then you'd be able to see your drills through it. Fantastic idea. I don't know how long I would wanna spend fussing with that because obviously this is smaller than the canvas and I don't know how many times you'd have to play back and forth between you know figuring out what size it needed to be to enlarge it to the right size so that it would fit on the canvas. I mean, maybe it wouldn't take that long. Maybe if you're really good at math and you can do all those calculations and figure out what, exactly what percentage it needs to be, that would not be me. I would just be trial and erroring it. And so I decided I didn't wanna do that, but it would be a good idea, something to keep in mind for something else, for a different project. Lots of things that I learned and lots of things that I can, can will consider. So now I have all of these that I need to put back in my spares, then I'll see where I'm at. I am still considering taking some of my spares, especially colors that I have a ton of, and donating them to the preschool for that project that I talk about in the other video, but we'll see. Okay, so I want to show you guys what the completed project looks like. Ta-da, here it is. I think it turned out really well. I'm really pretty happy with it. Now, like I said, I think the ABs in the green here of the hills looks a little bit weird, um, but it, it was a learning project. I think the river looks really good, the rocks, the bear turned out really nicely. It was a bit <laughs> challenging to do all of the blues up here because one of these colors of blues I ran out of. So actually, this blue over here is supposed to be the same as this blue, but I ran out. So I just got something that was sort of similar. Not exactly the same, but because they're not right next to each other, you can't really tell and it's all good. Everything else went pretty well. Um, I got, by the time I got up here into this kind of dark blue up here, I'd gotten off somewhere. So I don't think that my drills are placed exactly correctly, but it looks good. So I'm okay with that. What am I going to do with all of this extra space out here. I considered using black or something to just kind of make a frame around it to fill in the whole 30 by 30. It would use up a bunch of spare drills, but I decided that, you know, I kind of like the fact that this is round and not square. And so I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut off the majority around it and then the little bits you know, there'll probably be one row around it that will still show, and I will probably seal it at least on that outer section just so that doesn't stick to anything, and then it will just go in my portfolio. I could take the time to multi-place all of the, the rest of it, but my options were to do black, which I thought would be too dark and would look kind of odd or to do white, which I thought would look good, but we all know my feelings about backgrounds of white. I feel like it would just accentuate all of the gaps and missed placements that I would do, and it just wouldn't look good. So I'm opting not to do that. 
yes, it would use up a lot of spares, but I just don't think in the end it would look good enough to make it worth it to me. So I'm just going to cut around it, seal the edges so that whatever's left, you know, showing is not going to be sticky and then I will do it. And as I'm sitting here looking at it, I'm just thinking, I wonder if I could find a frame for it. I'm probably just going to stick it in my portfolio though. Yeah, but I but it was a a learning project, which was the point of all of this. So, I learned some things about what I need to do if I'm going to be doing a cross stitch conversion and how I want to do it making sure that I have some way that I can keep track of, you know, the drills. I've got the Pattern Keeper app, um, and I do have like some charts from Heaven and Earth Design. Don't have the blank canvases for them yet, but yeah, definitely something I need to keep in mind. And even as small as this project is, it took way longer than I thought. I mean, it took me a good probably six hours, maybe a little over six or seven hours to do this because you have to keep referring back and forth and back and forth as opposed to, you know, when you get one where it's already printed, it's just, oh, stick all the dots here and be done. So it is more time consuming, but I do think it's also a little bit more rewarding because then at the end, you've sort of created something out of nothing. I just had this blank canvas and now I have this cool little round painting. I think that's the other thing that made me decide that I wasn't going to fill all this in I've never really done a round painting like this before. They're typically almost always square or rectangular. Yeah, just something appealing about having it be round. I mean, I've done things that kind of look round that are partials or whatever, but yeah. So I think I'm just gonna cut off the extra and seal the edges, like I said, and call that good. Learned a lot, like I said. Um, some things I definitely, you know, thought would be okay, like mixing my dye lots that I have now decided Hmm, maybe that was not the best plan for me. So I may be going back through some of my spare drills and looking at them and going, hmm, you know, maybe that wasn't the best plan. Maybe I'll just, those will be some of the ones that I donate, like this 317, where they're just so mixed in there that I just don't want to take the time, quite frankly, to sort through them. And it's a color that is in a lot of kits and I will probably have a stash built back up in no time. So yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. The ones that aren't mixed together, I will put back in my spares. The ones that are mixed together, I'll find something to do with and call it good. There's my latest project. Thanks for joining me today, guys. Thanks for hanging around till the end of the video. Before you leave, don't forget to do all the things. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and hit that bell notification icon so that you can be informed of future uploads. And as always, guys, thanks so much for watching.